concurrency, how, you, how concurrency works and how you can use this or <laughs> to it's okay. It's okay. to to increment a counter on MongoDB. So each time one of you will load the page, it will simply put increment a counter on MongoDB. Okay, and we will see what happens if I shut down MongoDB. How do I handle this? Uh, with uh, still keeping the redundancy and the concurrency uh, so that the clients you are are not affected. You won't see that MongoDB is down. You won't get any error message and the thing will continue to just work. The only thing you will see is that the counter will stop uh, incrementing on your, on your screen. But the thing with fault tolerance is to not actually lose data. So I will show you a simple trick of how to use USGI to achieve that with no real big overhead. Uh, and uh, when I will put, down, put back on MongoDB, the thing will just uh, get all the things you will have done by uh, the time uh, MongoDB was down. And it will just re-increment every call that it has uh, received during the downtime so that the counter will actually uh, be consistent with the whole time and we won't lose any data. Okay? And as I said, it's a concrete talk, so I will hopefully be able to present you the actual code. And I hosted it on GitHub, so you can get it uh, whenever you want. And if you have uh, the problem one day or uh, you are interested in in going further, we can discuss it uh, also. Uh, well, the idea is to get really, really a simple, um, yeah, that would be me, uh, a simple web service that's, that's achieving that. Grazie. I'm sorry. Uh, so that's me, uh, Ultrabug. Um, I'm CIO at Mille Merci. That's, uh, that's a French advertising uh, company in uh, Paris. And I'm also uh, uh, quite now a pretty long time gentle Linux developer, uh, where I focus mainly on cluster stuff. And I package some things like uh, in uh, NoSQL world, like I'm the main packager of uh, MongoDB, PyMongo, and stuff like that, and USGI as well. I'm, I'm the one taking care of uh, the packaging of USGI for Gen2 Linux. So I'm a DevOps, as a side note. So I'm mainly a sysadmin we, who went into the programming world thanks to Python. Uh, so that's why I like uh, this, uh, this language a lot, and I like to promote it. And now I also take care of a little team in our uh, company who is focused on uniquely developing in Python. Okay, so you will, for, uh, I think you will have some things to say about my code or coding style or anything, uh, so bear with me, I'm sorry for this, but uh, well. So without no further presentation, this is the stack we'll be talking about. So we'll have one Nginx process and server in running on front of our stack. Um, this has uh, many advantages uh, for the first one, obviously, is to serve static files, but which we won't use that uh, in, uh, in this talk. There is also things you can implement in Nginx uh, to handle fault tolerance if your USB stack goes down, and, but we won't go too much uh, in this as well. I will just focus on how you can design a concurrent web service using USGI. So the thing is, you will, we will have one USGI given process running. Okay, so we have only one processor on the machine, so that's pretty easy. <laughs> you you don't have much uh, much choice, and we will also uh, so this 
Jvan process will insert each time you load the page a, a counter in MongoDB. Okay, that's why that's when things go smooth and you're happy. Uh, but what if it goes down? Well, we will just use the USGIS pooler processing uh, method. I don't know if you any of you use USGIS, okay. and you know about the spooler mechanism. No. Well, I'll show you how to use that spooler mechanism to actually handle handle failure of your uh, MongoDB server or whatever you want. Um, the main idea is that I'll try to asynchronously write into MongoDB, so generate an I.O. on network I.O. on MongoDB, and if it fails, I'll catch that and instead write or spool a file containing a message, which is basically message one, okay, and write it on disk. So each call that will go in, the, in my application, instead of writing MongoDB, as long as MongoDB fails, I will spawn a new file on disk. And on and on and on. When the spooler process will frequently retry and get all the files you have spooled over the time and retry to insert them in MongoDB, the normal way. If it still fails, the file will go will st will will not be removed and will it will stay there and we will retry later it's okay okay this way when i get mongodb back every call will actually have its increment back into mongodb all right so let's experience it so if you can go on this uh, url you will see a simple number and there is a, lot, a little bit of JavaScript which actually says the timeout of one second so your browser will refresh the, refresh the page and you should see the counter incrementing by one every second. Am I right? Yeah? Can see it? Alright. So this runs concurrently because as I said I have only one process one uh, USB process managing the Python code and using Gevent I'm actually able to serve you all on the on at the same time even if I have some IO between this because what you see is uh, and I don't have the, the code here so uh, that won't be really cool but anyway, I'll try. Now you have the spec of the machine running <laughs> the actual test you are seeing. So you can see it's a pretty old stuff. Okay, so here I can see, uh, thanks to USG statistics, that the requests come in and everything works smoothly. All right. The, I have also uh, a find which is which says that I have zero spool files for now. It's no, it's no more. MongoDB is working. So now I'm just gonna stop MongoDB. It's a bit laggy. As I said, it's running on a personal connection, so it's really <laughs> not. It's not super. All right. So now. My server starts complaining, well, my code starts complaining and logging, because I, I asked him so, uh, that it got connection refused to MongoDB. Okay? And now I can see that my spool files are being, as files as being spooled, sorry, on uh, the spooler. It should still run smoothly for you, but the counter, no. Nope. Yeah, that's fine. That's 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 perfectly yeah, normal. So, yeah, yeah. I just keep the last value I had from Mongo, and I still serve it to you. But I still answer to you, don't I? You don't see an actual uh, 500 error. No, no. So that still works. And the current count of spool files, so of calls, is. 18, 9, 9, 900, 1000 now, okay? 
So when I'm going to get MongoDB back up, you should see this, this, um, this counter increase more or less rapidly by, let's say, 1,300. One okay, ready? If the SSH lets me to. So counter is 100, about 1,500, okay? Let's go. MongoDB is back up. And sup. everything's back. And the counter just uh, kept up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what else can I say? Um, it's pretty fairly simple. I will love to. Sh I would love to show you the, the actual code, but I can't. I'm sorry about that. Uh, the the URL of the code is here. Okay. So Ultrabug, that's me. Uh, that's me on Gen two on everywhere. You can. And so the, that's, you will see, it's really a simple code. And I, w I would have loved to explain it to you in life, but. Uh, go to GitHub. Go to GitHub. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I'm stupid. Uh, can I go to, can you yes. go to yes. this URL? Please? Thank you. I'm sorry. Um, what else can I say between this? Um, well, it's. You would see it's really, really, really simple. Um, I mean, that we're we're using this for uh, this kind of method uh, for ultra bug. Ultra bug. U L T R B. Yeah, that's me. Yeah. E P. And E P. Thanks. That's the code. OK. So if you have gone to some G event uh, talks, you heard about monkey patching, which replaces uh, synchronous. OK, you know about this, so we'll skip that. Then we have the standard Flask imports, nothing big here. Uh, we'll use USG, so you, you, we use USG uh, decorators, which is the pool row decorator, which is. Can you print the font size? Oh, yeah. Um, I guess. Where's the plus here? Ooh, whoa. What kind of weird language is this? Oh, <laughs> it's the same for me. It's, it's worse than French. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> More? Yeah. Well. Cool. All right. Uh, the spool row decorator is uh, uh, a decorator you apply to a function, and this is the function that will be called with an argument the message you have spooled. Uh, when the when things goes down, I use the Flask PyMongo um, project to 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 handle my Mongo connection in Flask. So okay. So good enough. All right. Uh, I'll take the main code is here. You know. So every time you call the, the page, I will spawn a G event greenlet asking get me the counter, get counter function, get me the counter from MongoDB. That's all. And we'll join. So that's the part where I will block or will wait and process another uh, request of one of the other of you guys and do the same thing until I get the, the, the answer from MongoDB. OK? So that's where concurrency happens, right? When I get the result, I will store it in a counter, which I will take the value returned by the greenlet. So the, the function get counter really returns a value. That's here, OK? Well, it just connects to, to Mongo. Just do a fine one, get me the counter, get me the value. If something happens, I return none. If, that's, if I get the result, I return the result. So that's why I check. And if something happens, so when uh, MongoDB was down, I was returning the ORD. So that's the last count I was able to get. That's a class uh, I, uh, I stored. 
and then I present it to you. It's, uh, I, I just give you the HTML. Okay, so, yeah, I'm almost done. Uh, then, what happens is that I will just spawn a new greenlet with uh, the order to increment the counter, but I won't wait for it to be finished before serving you the HTML. So that can keep, I don't know, I don't care about what the, the time it can keep, it can take to, to actually happen in MongoDB. The thing is, you got your page and I can process still lots of you guys. So the increment counter is that it there is where uh, it's, um, the spooling happens. So I try to insert, if I get an exception, whatever, what, I can't insert into MongoDB and I am not in the, so that's a, the only tricky part is here. If I am not the spooler process, okay, that means if I am the one talking with Nginx, I am the one who has to spool. Okay? If I am the spooler process, I, I told you, I, I reuse the same function both in the spooler and in the front uh, processing uh, process. Sorry. Uh, so if I, am, if I am the front process, I just spool a message which, con which contain one and that's all and that's what is written on disk, okay? If not, I raise. So that means I am the spooling process. I am trying to process a, a spool uh, file, but MongoDB is still down, so I re-raise the exception, and I won't do anything. I will try again later, okay? And that's the end here. That's the spool row. So that's the spooler um, function. I just call the increment counter. If it fails, well, I print it, so that gets me the logs. You, you should have saw that uh, here. And I just say, retry later. It's OK. Else, that means I actually managed to insert it in MongoDB. And I say, spool OK to USG. And USG will take care of deleting the file from the spool directory. OK? Got it. I think we have time for a question. <laughs> Sorry. Chris, so what is it that's actually getting stored on the spool? What, which actual data is it? What's action? What is the actual data that gets stored on the spool? I don't want to get to a question. So you said you had a spool file there that gets deleted. Yeah. What is the data that gets stored in there? Well, that's the message one. Can you repeat the question? Yeah, sorry. So what gets deleted in your meaning, what gets written on the spool file? The, on the spool file, you can write only string. So you have to actually uh, use pickle or anything if you have uh, Python objects you want to, to store. But in my case, I was just send, saying, write me a string, which is basically a dictionary. And I will get back a dictionary with a field message and a value of one. In my case, that's always a counter which I increment by one. So I didn't have to actually get the message and process it. But you could have a complex message. That's actually what we do in production at work. And write a, a, a complete uh, JSON in, in, in the spool file. And that's what you will get back from the environment. I, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, sorry. Okay. Thank you again. Sorry.